Hi, everybody. It is Ashley here from the community team at Tiltify. So happy for our next discussion in our community spotlight with Pika Chulita. She is an incredible queer creator here on, of course, Twitch, but she has content everywhere else on different social platforms. And we're going to talk about her fundraising efforts, especially for queer organizations, talk about a little bit about her Twitch community and her content creation path. So we're going to throw it over to Pika. Give us a little introduction about yourself and your content. Hi, I think, first of all, thank you so much for bringing me on here. Of course. The spotlight. <laughs> um, so once again, my name is Pikachu Lita. Um, most people just call me Katie or Pika, both work. Um, I am a charity and diversity focused variety streamer. Um, I have been streaming on Twitch since about September, I believe, of 2014. Um, wow. Just recently became partnered last year. I also am now currently uh, partnered with Logitech G as well. And I am pretty much the textbook definition of a variety streamer. Um, I pretty much play anything that is not Call of Duty and sports games. So you might see me playing something, you know, uh, action adventure or a platformer or horror or a simulator or a farming game or a first person shooter. I'm literally all over the place and uh we also do a lot of just chatting over on my uh channel and my community um Ooh. so we'll talk about anything from you know games to movies to tv music and you know world issues world events food um sex ed it's we're we're literally all over the place um and we also spend um multiple times a year really um fundraising for different charities different um different various causes um if i'm not raising money for like an actual nonprofit organization um i'm raising money for community members that may need um you know may need a little bit of additional help uh we have raised money before for one of our mods whose mother had passed away and so we helped raise money for her home going celebration um and then more recently one of my mods uh who is a trans man uh got tired surgery and we were helping him with like the recovery costs and things like that so um i have a very like strict um policy that i do not uh for myself personally uh believe in sub goals because generally speaking i do not like to feel like i'm pushing or pressuring my community to do things like sub or to tip me anything like that because um i'm not a full-time content creator so majority of my income comes from my actual full-time job um and i would much rather them put that money towards somebody else who may actually need it um and my community is basically full of black brown and queer non-binary and trans individuals so we are huge i mean it's a the foundation of my community is essentially um diversity equity and inclusion um i wholeheartedly believe that your community is a direct reflection of you and your morals and your standards um so my crowning achievement has been the community that i have cultivated um because i have put extra care into cultivating it and vetting and sort of molding um, who I do allow in my space um, to where different marginalized identities, um, people of all kinds can feel, mm -hmm. um, you know, safe, respected and celebrated and to try to give them a voice however I can. Oh, gosh, I love you so much because you're just an all-around <laughs> great human being and you're always speaking up for the trans community and other queer folks and that is so important especially outside of pride month i know we talk about this a lot but it needs to be stressed uh these queer people exist outside of pride month i don't know if anyone knows that but they do <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's amazing to see how you uplift other people within a community and we we love that about you the most, Pika. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And we will always support you in any way and uplift you and your platform. And you're doing great. So I I love how you support your community as well, you know, and how you raise. You said you fundraise for a top surgery for your uh, community member that was that is a trans man. And how was that experience? 
you know, doing that um, with your community. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, I mean, it was great. Anytime I, I feel like I can make a difference in somebody's life, it's, that's all I really care about. I mean, even if I, granted, I'm one of those people that'll sit there and say like, oh, well, like I know in my head that, and, and don't get me wrong, any and every like donation helps, but I'm always like, I want to raise so much money for you <laughs> because if I had it my way, I would just throw my wallet at this person. Like it's, it's, it's wanting to do like so much and more, but um, we ended up uh, raising a good bit of money and, um, you know, because even though we did one of them directly through like my actual, I basically changed my whole tipping page to where it went directly uh, to him. And then I also had a link for a platform that's kind of like, uh, kind of like GoFundMe um, mm. to where uh, he could get the funds. So he actually had, even though, so the, the, what, what it was, was essentially he was, it wasn't to pay for the actual surgery, but it was more so to help with his recovery because he was being asked to recover outside of his own um his own home yeah uh, because unfortunately his parent has not been supportive of you know him getting the top surgery so yeah um we just helped raise money for like if he needed to you know stay anywhere or if mm -hmm. he needed to, wanted to put that towards moving you know however he needed to use it needless to say his his uh parent ended up coming through and, and providing him with a place to you know recover and and you know so it was just like hey you whatever you need with that money because i know that he is looking to move and, and get into a a more healthy environment more you know a, a way where he's not like not in a place that's not being supportive of you know who he is as a person um yeah so that's essentially what that money ended up going towards and i just i felt it felt really good that i was able to to help him with that that is so kind. Thank you for sharing a little bit about that experience that you have with your community. And I know that he is so grateful for you. And I just, you know, that's so sweet because you don't meet people like you every day, Pika. So I hope you know that you're doing amazing things with your time. And Thank you. that is absolutely incredible. You're a rock star. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, Talking more about you being a rock star, you have done so much with the Tiltify platform and fundraising for so many different causes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience fundraising with Tiltify and supporting your favorite causes? Yeah, um, so I think the first Tiltify campaign that I actually did was in was about a little over two years ago. Um, I actually think the first one that I did was for St. Jude Play Live, actually. <laughs> Um, funny enough, it was right after, uh, you know, attending the uh, St. Jude Summit, which is where I got to meet you. Um, <laughs> so I actually think I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was actually my first like thing that I raised money for through Tiltify. And I will say, I mean, even now, but especially that year, um, you know, I was I was like I had just got my PC. You know, I spent all those years, gosh, streaming directly from my PlayStation. Yeah. And so, like, I had just that spring had gotten, like, my actual PC. So using using Tiltify to, to get that fundraiser set up just made my life so much <laughs> infinitely easier because I was so, like, I just went into it not really knowing, like, a lot about, I mean, I, I'm very computer savvy, but just in terms of like, you know, dealing with OBS and like alerts and et cetera, et cetera. And I will say the, it's definitely got my favorite UI of all of the charity like platforms that I've like used. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I more recently had to do one that was not through Tiltify. And I literally remember telling my fiance, I was like, dang, I wish this was through Tiltify. <laughs> it's so much easier. Cause I was like, no, I was, I ended up making some, a couple of mistakes initially. I got them, they were pretty easily rectified, but it's with Tiltify, it's gotten to the point now because it's basically where I do all of my fundraising aside yeah. from you know, the, the little personal ones um, that I know everything like the back of my hand. It's actually funny because I think it was uh, one of my other, uh, one of my other good friends who had never um, like done the, you know, the charity fundraising and never done anything through Tiltify. I'm like, 
listen, I can have this set up for you in less than 10 minutes. You tell me <laughs> who you're trying to raise money for and I can do the rest. And you just tell me yep. how you want it to look, what colors, what kind of like anything. <laughs> I was like, I guarantee you I can set it up in 10 mm -hmm. minutes at the most 15. Cause I, I, <laughs> I've even now, like there's been times where I have, um, you know, I was, I was like out of town or I wasn't at home and I would, you know, have to like, come home to do like a charity stream and I would get home, you know, kind of like a little bit, not too soon before the, the charity stream actually started. And, yeah. um, I never like, I, 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 you know, it was, it was, it was last minute, but I didn't need like a whole bunch of advanced time because the speed in which I have set up Tiltify campaigns <laughs> is, it is it is wild I almost feel like <laughs> for how how because i set them up so fast now because it's just like i know what i'm doing yeah it's, it's like clockwork nature to me right yeah i have so much muscle memory when it comes to like doing certain things but it's it's all all jokes aside it's it's been it, it's been a really um it's been a really positive experience um it definitely has made it so much easier for me to be able to raise money. And I like that this process has been so streamlined and so seamless. Really any any issues that I had with anything were, you know, very easily rectified or there was there was some like method of like, you know, there was some method of like finding the answer to what my issue actually was. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just been great. And like I said, that is, that is generally who I raise money through pretty much multiple times a year. And we're to the point now where I've, uh, I think last time I checked, I think at this point I've cleared up almost 15,000 um, wow. for different charities raised. So, um, and I'm hoping to within the next, hopefully within maybe the next uh year or so i would like to push that to like i think i like to think fifteen thousand is a pretty good amount for two yeah. years yeah yeah um, especially because there's times where you know i mean obviously i've done campaigns of varying length you know sometimes they're uh, a week sometimes they're a month sometimes they're a couple of days yeah um, i like to think that's a pretty good amount but i'm hoping to double if not triple that amount within the next year because yeah. that is that is what I do. I'm the the uh, the resident charity streamer in my sort of like <laughs> circle of people that I associate with. So, and I'm usually who people go to for for assistance with setting them up now. So, wow, that's that's awesome. And fifteen thousand dollars that's that's a lot. That's a lot. That's definitely a huge well, accomplishment. Account, so yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. You have fundraised for so many different causes. Did you want to talk about the favorite, you know, some of your favorite campaigns you've done? Yeah. So um, obviously I do sing Jude play live every single year. Now this year I actually decided to move it um, because yeah. the month um, that sing Jude play live season was actually happening was when I was raising money for one of my moms um, okay. for the top surgery support. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing about you know that is I can I can do it any time of year. It's just I wasn't gonna get prizes for it. Which, as much as I love those St. Jude Play Live prizes, I have already two backpacks, two mouse pads. I am running out of space. At this point. <laughs> I have so many cups and t-shirts and just yeah. everything. And I'm like, listen, I love y'all with all my heart. The folks over at St. Jude Play Live, I'm so sorry if you hear my cat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the folks over say you play live or whatever but i'm like i am running literally running out of space to put i'm to the point now where i'm just like next the next prize season i'm just gonna give it away give, give it away yeah to my community because yeah i'm running out of space for stuff so i decided to push it back to later this year um probably october is probably when i'm gonna do it for but definitely love saint jude play live because there's just so much there's so much good energy around saint jude play live season really yeah um and you know again saint jude is a very personal thing for me because saint jude is here in memphis and that's why um that's where i live so and you know working with the folks like i said with saint jude play live that the, they're just that whole team is just an absolute delight and they have their own you know they have their own tools and stuff that make fundraising for play live just even more seamless and again it's through tiltify so it's <laughs> it's, it's so easy to do. Um, I would have to say my next favorite is definitely Trans Lifeline. Um, 
So I've raised money for Trans Life Fund a couple of times, but the main times that I have raised money for TLL has been um, through the Trans Lifeline charity stream a thought that they have every year. Okay. Um, so I just recently, a couple of months ago, did it this year, and then I also did it last year as well. Um, and essentially what that is, is that's where there's this, it's this huge lineup of, you know, different streamers. And they basically stream for a week straight leading up into Trans Day of Visibility. Um, and they start at a certain time and every single like hour, uh, there's mm -hmm. different slots, but every hour there is someone live. And literally it's a marathon until Trans Day of Visibility. Wow. Um, it's 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 a wonderful thing and how it essentially works is you know when one streamer ends their stream they go and it's like a train we go and bring it to the next person in line yeah and bring our <laughs> to them it's just a train of like raids and hosts and things like that and gosh i i, I honestly wish now i would have like actually looked up the numbers but gosh the not specifically like for me the amount of money that i've raised but just like the whole entire event has raised i think it's actually cleared a hundred thousand grand each year if i'm wow. not on that but i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that at least one of the years they cleared over a hundred thousand and it's that that whole entire just like charity event is just it's so fun it's it's so it's so fun and just the amount of good that i feel like that i'm doing especially for you know trans lifeline because the thing about trans lifeline is obviously you know with saint jude is saint jude is a is a you know a very large um children's research hospital mm -hmm. and you know saint jude is completely funded by you know donations and charitable donations and stuff um but obviously trans lifeline is you know the same way um but you know they're not a you know a sort of a large entity hopefully mm -hmm. we get them to that point but um as it stands they're not a large entity they are completely um created for and by trans individuals it's a basically a crisis helpline for trans individuals and um you know they you know offer grants to trans individuals for you know hrt hormone replacement therapy um they offer different little micro grants for things like you know their legal name changes for individuals who change their names um and who no longer want to use their dead name so it's just there's so much different stuff that you with both really both those causes St. Jude and TLL that you really like you know exactly what your money is going towards and it's like you can see it especially because I have so many you know friends of mine um whether they're other streamers or just people in my community who are trans and who are on you know HRT and mm -hmm. you know or who have had surgeries and et cetera, et cetera, who use resources like that. So it's like yeah. seeing that sort of happen like it on a personal level and knowing that I'm contributing to that just it it gives me a feeling that I, I really can't even describe. It's just it's 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 phenomenal. Yeah. And, and the you... folks over Trans Lifeline are amazing too, by the way. They're just they, they are. are yeah. They're so wonderful. <laughs> yes. I I always chat with Brie and Brie is amazing. Good freaking people over there. <laughs> yes, definitely. definitely. And thank you so much for that because you know it gives us a little background on how you do resonate with these causes that you do fundraise for and why, you know. And it's always important to you know, bond with your community and, you know, tell them, hey, this is why we're fundraising for this cause because of X, Y, Z. I love this cause. It supports the people that I want to help uplift. And, you know, Trans Lifeline is so important. So important. Right. So Absolutely. Yeah, I, I love that. Love that cause <laughs> so much. <laughs> and, of course, St. Jude, absolutely incredible. I love St. Jude Play Live season. So fun. So many happy faces, you know, and seeing these kids smile, it's so motivating. Like, I want to continue to see these smiles. So more and more fundraising gets these kids to smile and beat this horrible, horrible disease like cancer and so many others. So 
Thank you Absolutely. so much for sharing a little bit with us on your favorite causes you support. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any causes that you would like to support in the near future? Um, I did raise money for Black Girls Code before, but I would love to do it again for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would also at some point like to do like a... I recently, none of this wasn't through Tiltify, but I did recently um, do a fundraiser for um, Rices, which, um, you know, offers low cost slash free legal support to immigrant children, families, and refugees. Um, so I would love to, you know, do something like that again, or basically to raise money for any indigenous charities. Can't think of any off the top of my head, um, yeah. but just any like indigenous charities. Um, some like water-based charities I've, I've also had my eye on before, um, to providing like, you know, clean drinking water and, um, really if there is any, I would not be opposed to, um, oh, I, I know, I know. I just thought of one actually that I had, I had talked about doing before. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's, and see, that's, that's one other thing I would love to start doing is I would love to like especially because I want to start doing some local stuff like here in Memphis um, yeah. or just like in Tennessee. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to, I've, I've had this plan in my head to try to reach out to some of the charities mm -hmm. or some of the nonprofit organizations and talk them into getting signed up through Tiltify mm -hmm. um, so that I could like, so that people like not even just me, but like other, even like other Memphis streamers mm -hmm. that are people anywhere really. Uh, but especially yeah. here in Memphis could, you know, contribute because I, I've had it in my head that I have wanted to, um, I want to raise money just in general for like women's shelters yeah. for women's shelters or to, you know, provide and providing like, um, feminine products. Yeah. To, you know, different women's shelters mm -hmm. or for women in homeless shelters and things like that. Um, because I don't think people quite realize how the, the cost of things like tampons and pads and stuff, it, it, it piles up. It mm -hmm. really does. Yeah. Um, and just any sort of like sort of sanitary feminine products, it can, it can really, um, really pile up. And so, like I said, doing that or just especially even here local, um, would love to do something like that in the future or something like providing something for, you know, homeless individuals or houseless individuals, yeah. such as like blankets and, and socks and just, just necessities, um, yeah. that, that we can provide to them and, or even, you know, raising money for like Planned Parenthood. I mean, I'm huge um, with reproductive rights and I'm, you know, obviously pro contraceptives, pro sex ed, um, pro sex positivity, pro abortion, et cetera, et cetera. So even just funding for that, because unfortunately a lot of places, um, especially in the South, um, mm -hmm. do not have access to, you know, proper, um, you know, proper services right, like that. There's a lot of places, mm -hmm. unfortunately, where people are going after Planned Parenthood and mm -hmm. trying to get them shut down and things like that. So, um, like, I know there's only one here in Memphis that they've tried to, you know, shut down. And um, unfortunately, there's people that go out there and uh, protest. And uh, mm -hmm. I've also made it a point, this has nothing to do with fundraising, but I've after the pandemic, hopefully if that happens, um, <laughs> we, uh, I would, I, I do have it set in my head that I would like to be an escort for people to go to Planned Parenthood because a okay. lot of times they will have volunteers that will escort people to the clinics that they don't get costed and harassed. Um, but it's, it's very, things like Planned Parenthood are, are especially crucial because again, it's, I know that people, when, when you hear Planned Parenthood, your mind, yeah. a lot of people's minds just immediately goes to like abortion and things like that, which is yeah. so important, but um, abortion actually accounts for, I think, less than like 2% of Planned Parenthood actual services. Like majority of the time they're doing pregnancy testing, STD testing, mm -hmm. you know, different screenings, breast cancer yeah. screenings. Like there's so much different stuff, good stuff that they do and it, it needs 
needs needs needs funding and and because i mean if any even any of these these you know nonprofit organizations or anything that may receive government funding it's not to say that that government funding might not always exist exactly so, yeah wow that's that's a lot in store that you have for yourself for the future. I like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I got, you know, I got a lot planned. <laughs> yeah, and most of the you know causes that you mentioned, we do have on Tiltify. You know, Charity Water is a really good one. Um, so many different causes for Indigenous people as well. So definitely, there's some where you could just search up the keyword and you're like, oh, here's all of them that I was looking for, and you know, they'll give you a list that you can choose from. So I've actually That's done that awesome. before. I literally went through the like list and I just, I literally scrolled yeah. from A to like Z <laughs> with the numbers included. And I'm like, I want to raise money for them one day. All right. Like I just, it was just like, <laughs> ma I made a mental note for later. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this is on here. We're going to raise money for this. And yeah. it's not to say that that, I mean, the list is going to of course expand because you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have people like different organizations that are going to be joining you know the platform so every it's like day. i'm gonna yep. you know, get on in six months and there's gonna be even more so i'm like mm. i just i literally get to like my pick of the litter i'm like i'm gonna fundraise for this and then this and then this and then I'm, <laughs> I'm <all over> place. <laughs> not not even you're you're doing good with your time so that's that's a great thing pika and thank you so much for sharing you know your story today we are so appreciative and we get to uplift you this week so thank you so much and i definitely want the audience to find you on socials so if you can let them know how they can find you that would be awesome yeah um so i am pikachu Lita across all platforms i predominantly use twitch and twitter that's Pikachu and then L-I-T-A at the end. Perfect. And of course, you can call her Katie as well, like she said, or just Pika. Katie, Pika, Katie Chu. Just, yeah, <laughs> I've heard so many variations of it. I'm like, I, have time. I don't even have a real name anymore. So I'm yes. Like, I'm going to legally get my name changed to Pika, not even Katie. Yeah. <laughs> They're all so cute, too. I love it. But... Again, thank you so much for chatting with us. And y'all check down below and click all her social media links and give her a follow and keep up with her content. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.